Hey guys, how you doing? Hope everybody's doing well. So it's been about two weeks since my last video, which was my Saturday night special. I do apologise. I've not really picked much up. I've picked up the odd thing here and there, so I've not really picked anything up worthwhile to make a video for. I have picked up one item which I'm really impressed with. Um, unfortunately, when I picked it up, it didn't work. It was a system. So I'm in the process of getting that fixed, and as soon as it's fixed, I'll make a pickups video and show you the, the couple of games that I've picked up, and they are literally a couple plus the system as soon as it arrives back. But yeah, other than that, this video really is just going to be a video about games I've been playing recently and my thoughts, because I've been playing a couple of excellent games and I've really enjoyed them a lot, so I just want to talk to you guys about them and tell you what I think. So yeah, and I just want to start as well before I do anything. I just want to say a big massive thank you to all of my subscribers. I recently hit two and a half thousand subscribers, which is just absolutely insane. It's just such a massive number and I just can't comprehend that amount of people. But yeah, I just want to say thank you to everyone that's subscribed to my channel. And I'm glad that if you've been subscribed for a while, you've stuck around, you've enjoyed the videos enough to want to stay around. And I really appreciate everybody who watches my videos, whether you just watch the videos and you don't comment, or you do watch the videos and comment, or you PM me as well. You know, all my friends on YouTube, I've really enjoyed being on here and I really appreciate every single person that has clicked that button and likes my videos enough to want to subscribe and see more content so thank you very much guys so first game I've been playing recently is one of my recent pickups and it is Gears of War 3 for the Xbox 360 now I'm going to start by saying I was criticised when I did my E3 video and I slagged this off as far as what Microsoft are producing mainly because I don't agree that Microsoft are doing a good job because they've only got three core franchises and they don't seem to care about any new IPs or really pushing forward the development of the Xbox franchise and actually giving gamers a good selection of titles. That's my opinion. I don't know, one particular YouTuber got offended that I slagged off Gears of War by saying it was just going to be the same again and nothing in particular, nothing amazing. They weren't going to really push the boat out. And he accused me of not playing Gears of War 1 and 2 because apparently, because I have an opinion, I haven't played the first two games. So if you're watching this, mate, yeah, I have played the first two games and I do know what I'm talking about. I played the first two all the way through. And I thought the first one was good, but not great. It had a few bugs. Two was better, and they ironed out the bugs. This one is definitely my favourite game. Really, really enjoyed this game a lot. I've got to say, I was right. It doesn't change at all, really. It's the same old thing, the same old cover-based shooting. They haven't really pushed the boat out. But it doesn't matter because it's such a fun game to just run through and just shoot monsters. And that's the great thing about it. There are a couple of things I didn't like about it. And... I didn't like the fact that they tried to put emotion into the story because it didn't fit for me. In fact, it came across very cheesy and silly and very like 80s action movie. It's like you've got these massive geezers with big guns blasting monsters in the face, shouting out you know, swear words left, right and centre and they're, you know, they're, they're just taking a piss for most of the game. And then they're trying to throw emotion into it and like you just think, well no, it don't work, it's silly. It doesn't, I, I, especially at the end of the game, there's an emotional moment for Marcus and it just came across so cheesy and I just laughed. I was like, oh, that is just terrible. Really bad script writing. But yeah, I think the acting was reasonable. It was good enough for what it does. It's serviceable. The problem you have, I find, with most games now is that when you look at Uncharted, the way they film their acting is that they have all the actors in the room and they bounce off each other like a normal actor would do. Whereas with a lot of games, they still have the thing where an actor will go into a booth, provide the voice, Another actor will provide another voice and then they mash it all together and it never really works. You don't get that vibe between the two actors like you do on Uncharted and I think we've been spoiled because I play Uncharted and it just makes me realise how bad all of the other games that I play are when it comes to cutscenes and acting and that's another negative of Gears of War 3 is the cutscenes. I found a lot of the time the cutscene would come out of left field. I'd be like raising my gun up to shoot a monster and then boom it trigger a cutscene and it just jump in and it just seemed really out of place and I was like what's going on here? It didn't seem like they knew how to implement cutscenes into the game properly which was a real shame. The only other negative I can say really, and this is just a personal negative, is that the one character Sam is voiced by the lady that plays Chloe in Uncharted and she didn't do anything different, she didn't change her accent or her voice or anything and to me that was weird because it's like Playing through Gears of War 3 with Chloe from Uncharted and it just didn't it just didn't fit to me. It felt really odd. I uh, didn't like that at all. But I mean that's the only negatives really. On the plus side, 
The combat is excellent. The AI is much better than it was in the first two games. It's improved over each title I found. You know, I found the AI in number one was pretty bad, especially your, your, your buddies like Dom, who was a pain in the ass in the first game, and just committed suicide quite a lot for me and quite annoyed me. <laughs> but in this game, it's excellent. And the AI is spot on. The action is absolutely excellent. I love the fact that you don't have to keep covering all the time. You can just like run out in the open and just blast away and just kill everything in sight. Stick a chainsaw in someone's head and it's just absolutely brilliant. It's brutal and it's fun. I think the main thing with Gears of War is that it doesn't take itself too seriously. I mean, it has tried to a little bit in the third one with the emotion, but other than that, it's just a cracking title. And it's just one of those games that you don't want to get too involved in the story because it doesn't really matter. You just want to shoot zombies, uh, not zombies, shoot monsters. Just shoot monsters, stick a chainsaw on them, create loads of gore, big action set pieces. I mean, it's just absolutely fantastic and well worth the money. And you get a really big game as well. I was quite surprised the length of the title. It seems, I don't know how many hours I've stuck into it, but it was a fair few hours running into this. And, you know, it took me a couple of days to get through it, so I was really impressed. You know, it's it's excellent, it's really good. As I say, I wasn't impressed with the story. I thought, you know, it was a bit cheesy. I thought the acting was just okay, not perfect. Um, but then I don't play Gears of War for that. I play Gears of War for the action, for the guns, you know, for the Lancer. You know, I mean, that's the main reason I play the game. And I, I did feel that I put it on normal mode, thinking that would be okay and I'd be able to get through the game okay. And I did, but I did feel it was a little easy, um, which was a bit odd. Because normal mode is sort of in the middle, so it shouldn't be too easy, it shouldn't be too difficult, it should be enough balance. But I found it really easy, especially the final boss battle. I seem to just piss through that, no problem. So I don't understand what happened there, it's a bit odd. But yeah, I mean, Gears of War 3, if you're a fan, buy it anyway, obviously. But if you're not a fan, and you're not too sure if you're going to like it, and you just want something to just blast, and just shoot monsters, blow stuff up, and just have a real fun time, then definitely go and try it. It's really, really good. And yeah, definitely the best in the series for me personally. Okay, so next game I've been playing, as you all know from my previous Saturday Night Special, is Cold Winter on the PlayStation 2. Now this game is absolutely excellent. I love this. I've literally finished it about 10 minutes ago and really, really impressed with this game. I did say on Saturday Night Special that the acting's a bit crap. And to be fair, it isn't the best acting, but then it is last generation, so they were still trying to find their feet. It does get better as the game goes on, and I've got to say, I really, really got involved in the storyline, I thought the storyline was excellently written and the characters are great, you really feel an affinity with each of the characters, especially the main three and in fact even I'd say the main four if you if you include um, John Gray who is just absolutely excellently narrating the whole story and as the story progresses you find out more information and it really drags you into it and draws your attention, I really enjoyed this game a lot I thought graphics were really good for a PS2 game as well. There's some really nice lighting effects, some great smoke effects. You know, it all looked pretty sharp and well designed. Really good level design. I thought the guns were fantastic. There's just some absolutely excellent weapons. Some of the assault rifles in particular, near the end of the game as well, you get some absolutely cracking assault rifles. And it was just a really, really great game. I mean, for the last generation, it always felt to me like they were trying to like find their feet between the 32-bit era and today's generation and last generation they were sort of like trying to like get to grips with how to make a game with a, story, a proper story with good cutscenes and how to balance it all out with the action and they seem to have nailed it with this, it's a really top title I did find that the AI on the enemies wasn't the best and they were a bit stupid but then you know it's old technology I can forgive that you know I definitely think this needs a new game, they should make a Cold Winter 2 and this generation would really improve this a lot, I mean you could bump the acting up you know, the storyline was great anyway, so they could just improve that slightly. And then obviously in, 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 increase the AI and make it better, because the AI was, wasn't the best. But I mean, other than the AI, I think this game is absolutely superb. My Saturday Night Special, the first level, really doesn't show you how good the game is, because as you progress, the, the better levels become apparent, and there's some absolutely superb levels later on. I did find it weird though, at the end of the game, and I won't give away any spoilers in case you want to play this game, but the last two levels, the penultimate level, was like playing through level one of Metal Gear Solid on the PlayStation 1, but in first person perspective, which was really strange. And then the last level was like playing through Quake 2. It was really odd. You could definitely see the influences in the game. It was really strange. 
But it's not for the bad thing because it looked great and it played great and it was really solid and the controls and everything were excellent. And it's a really, really, really fun first person shooter and I can't believe that this game doesn't get enough press. I mean, I've, you know, it doesn't seem to really get talked about too much and it should do because it's excellent. I would easily, as far as last generation first person shooters go, I would put this on par with Black in terms of like story, characters, you know, the narrative, the, the action. I just the guns. I just, I just really, really enjoyed it. Black has a slight edge because he's a lot more polished, but this is a really, really good contender for best first-person shooter of the last generation. Cracking game. Definitely recommend going and try it out, guys. If you've not played it, pick it up. It's dirt cheap, and um, especially if you're a first-person shooter fan, and just give it a shot because it's not like your bog standard run around, just kill things, and not really care about the story. This is a really well-constructed storyline, and yeah, Cold Winter. Love the game. So. The last two days, I decided to go back and play a game from this generation, and I don't know, I've just been really sucked into it recently, and it is Medal of Honor. Now, this game gets absolutely panned, because obviously Call of Duty fans think it's shite, and gamers in general, you know, slag it off because of its bugs, and yeah, oh, it has got a lot of bugs, there's no doubt about that, but I've got to say, going back to it, I found that I've got even more love than I had when I first played the game for it, because admittedly there are a lot of bugs that should not be there. Standard game design bugs, such as invisible walls, definitely should not be there. That's really bad and takes you out of the experience, and it ruins the game. It definitely does. Um, the AI is inconsistent. Sometimes it's really good, sometimes it's pretty crap. But, you know, other than that, the only other problem I really had when I first played the game was the ATV level, where I got back on the ATV after going around the village, and the game just froze and wouldn't let me go forward. I couldn't get off the uh, ATV, I couldn't move the ATV, I couldn't do anything. It was really strange. But all that aside, when you play the game now, if you actually look at the core gameplay and the guns, the storyline, the characters, the way it's constructed, the level design, it's actually really, really good. And I think when they bring the next Medal of Honor out, if they just polish the important parts, like the invisible walls, the AI, all the stuff that should be done first before anything else, you now all the major basic game mechanics, if they get that spot on and they keep going with a really good storyline like they've done in this one and they get the gameplay as well as they've done in this one then it could be a real contender for knocking Modern Warfare off its uh, throne because I like this more because it's more of an authentic feel Modern Warfare you basically just run around the streets and just shoot anyone that moves there's no real technique to it as such it's not like I was watching Steve Benway playing the beta version of Battlefield 3 he was saying about camping how people slag off campers and yet in reality a soldier is a camper because you know he takes cover, he takes his time, he doesn't just rush in and kill everything because that's not going to work, you'll just die. You have to take your time and pick off your targets and I find that happens with Medal of Honor a lot. You do find that it gives what I would expect, I mean you know I've never been in the war so I don't know but I, I would expect it to be a more authentic experience of fighting the Taliban because you do feel like you're not getting like thousands of enemies coming at you. You'll be walking through a valley and then suddenly out of nowhere you get like five guys just come out of the mountain tops and just start flanking you and you've got to like get behind cover and you've got to take your time and work out your targets and work as a team together. And I think it works really well and I've had a lot of fun playing the last two days. I've been playing near the end of the game last night where you go through the ice, the snow and the, the mountain tops and it's absolutely brilliant. And when you think about what you're actually doing, you don't just rush in like I always do because that's how I like to play games. I like to go in and throw grenades and shoot and that don't work on this game, you just die. And I, I really chuffed myself last night because I was more of a methodical and I, I thought about what I was going to do and my, my AI guys went down the right hand side, I went up on the left hand side and took the high ground, eliminated all of the enemies and then I could take down the guys that were down below and I had the advantage and I really enjoyed that. It just felt, me, it felt like being a soldier, it didn't feel like just being playing a game and there's, there's so much going on in this game, there's so many things they try to do and I do think that when the next Medal of Honor comes out, which is as far as I'm aware, they're doing it on, on a two-year cycle, so the next one hopefully will be next year, it should be. And I'm just hoping that they take all the criticism on board about the AI and the invisible walls and all the bad stuff in the game, all the bugs, and they you know, they take the time and they correct all that and they make a really solid game because I'm really excited for the next Medal of Honor if, if they can get it as good as that without the bugs because you can definitely see when playing the game what they were trying to achieve and unfortunately they failed, but, you know... It was only a half fail because of the bugs. The other half, the game is really cool. And Medal of Honor is damn really cheap. And I'm not sure if it's £10 yet or not. I think it's a bit more than that. But it's, it's really cheap. 
So if you've been put off by Medal of Honor's bugs and all the criticism the game's had, I would say if you can get it cheap enough, pick it up and try it for yourself and see what you think. Because you know you might be surprised. It you might not think it's as bad as some people have made out to be. I personally really like the game a lot, despite its flaws. And you know there is no excuse for those flaws at all. Developers shouldn't be doing that. But they're there, and there's nothing we can do about it. That's just the way it worked out, unfortunately. But I really, really enjoyed the game other than that. And so, yeah, I definitely recommend Medal of Honor for the right price. So, yeah, that's it really, guys. That's all I've been playing at the moment. And really, really enjoying them all. And I'm surprised how much I'm enjoying the PlayStation 2 as well because it's not a system that I'm a big fan of. But playing Cold Winter has convinced me that there are actually games out there on the PlayStation 2 that are worth playing. And, you know, it can be an enjoyable system. So I'm, I'm glad I picked that game up and I've played all the way through it. In fact, it's the first PlayStation 2 game I've actually completed, so that's another great bonus as well, so you know, big plus. So, yeah, that's it really, guys. That's all I want to do, just tell you about the games I've been playing, give you my impressions, and I'd like to hear from you guys if you've played any of those three games. What are your opinions? You know, What did you like? What did you not like? You know. So, thank you for watching, guys. Please leave comments below, and I'll be back very soon with another video. Hopefully, it'll be a pick-up video as soon as I get my system back, which should be shortly. And I'm hoping if the weather's good enough, and to be fair, it's, it's gone very dark and it looks like it's going to rain again, unfortunately. But I'm hoping the weather's going to improve by Sunday because I want to go to car boot before it gets to winter and it gets too cold. Because I've not been for about three weeks now and it's really frustrating. So, yeah, fingers crossed, you never know. Thank you for watching, guys, anyway. As always, I'll see you all again soon.